How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video and we've just finished watching the live stream hosted by Chris and Jesse, the community manager and the dev. Pretty awesome stuff was shown. We got to see a legendary mission in action from start to finish among other stuffs being demoed including the forge, field of view and other stuff. We also got a quick insight into patch 1.0.4 as well as other things being worked on. So without further delay, let's get cracking. So we get to see how you earn Elysium cash keys. These are pretty much earned as they said through a daily challenge and the one we've got as an example here is by way of a legendary contract. Pretty much complete the contract, get your key, jump into a stronghold and whoosh, get your chest. Pretty awesome stuff, pretty simple stuff but nonetheless this is going to be here with patch 1.04. Probably one of the biggest changes and one of the most fundamental for me is the fact that you can now access the forge without any loading. In fact if you press the touchpad on the PlayStation 4 and access that menu the forge is just there waiting to be selected as an option much like you would have it in Destiny. Pretty awesome stuff. Now all they need to do is allow us to change gear mid level and it's golden but I'm happy for this right now and this is awesome. The fact that I can access it anywhere in Fort Tarsus without having to load, I can access it at the end of a mission without having to load. This is all amazing stuff and I'm happy that this is finally in. This just shows and gives me hope that they can eradicate a lot more of the loading as they go along. They're changing the ways you collect legendary contracts. Now legendary contracts will appear on your map on a daily basis. Instead of having to go to all three NPCs or the launch bay to collect them all at once, now your legendary contracts will just appear on the map for you to do. Pretty awesome change, I like this change, I think it removes a little bit of the immersion but I also kind of was getting bored of having to run to the DMPCs because they are quite far apart but with that said, nice change, I know a lot of people will be happy with this so I won't complain. Earlier today people were saying that if Bioware want me to complete a stronghold they need to make it worth my while. Well now it's worth your while, stronghold bosses can now drop legendaries, well they will do next week as of patch 1.0.4 and yes the patch is dropping next week. So how will this work? The guaranteed masterwork will still be there, that is not leaving, that is not changing. However the remaining loot that drops can roll a legendary. On top of this as additional bonus loot, embers can also drop as well, all the way up to masterwork. So not only are you guaranteed a masterwork item as you were previously, but legendaries can now drop when you defeat the final boss. It is a roll so it is luck dependent but still the fact that it has a chance to drop means it's now worthwhile going from start to finish. I think this is a good change and the fact that bosses are now getting their loot drops increased this is nothing but a good thing so good stuff there as well. If you haven't noticed on the stat screen we now see the components this is another change towards them making a fully fledged stat screen. Why they can't just list the stats on the left I don't know. Even in an unfinished unpolished form I would much rather be able to see something that's completely unpolished than what we have now which is nothing. It's nice that we can see our components, it's nice that we can see everything else but what we really need is numbers on health, armor and everything else. So sure it's okay they are working towards it and the component exposure is proof of this but I would rather they just gave us something rather than nothing in regards to actual numbers. That's just me though. On top of all of this we'll be getting 6 new legendary contract missions and one of these will be repeatable throughout the day until reset. So every day when you get your free contracts, your free legendary contracts, one of them will be repeatable. That repeatable one can be repeated indefinitely until the day ends. So no longer do you have to wait until the next day in order to do your legendary contracts to try and boost you up for your quest. Once again, a really nice change. From here they started talking about patch 1.0.4 and taking questions from the community. So let's start. As of patch 1.0.4, Nvidia DLSS support is coming in. SLI support will not be in this patch, but DLSS support will be here. So if you've been waiting for DLSS support, you're in luck. Next week's patch will have this included. As you can see on screen right now, the Field of Valor options have now been added for PC only. This is not available for console due to performance issues, however on PC you pretty much have a vast array of options in order to tinker with this exactly how you desire. 
so good stuff for PC players, a shame for console, but I do understand why it's not available on console. They've made performance improvements on gameplay effects, these are like weather effects and things like this that are part of the game world as you play. These have been improved on and streamlined and the performance should be a lot better and prevent any form of crashing, so good stuff. At this point a community question came in regarding story missions. They didn't specifically state that there is story coming in patch 1.0.4, however they did confirm that there is story coming. The actors have been doing a lot more motion capture for these cutscenes, so definitely there is story coming. Hopefully it will be here with the new patch next week, but if it's not it will probably be arriving with the one in the following week. Either way it's nice to see that there is a lot more story content coming our way in the world of Anthem. Because anyone that knows me knows that I live for this stuff. I love story, I love cutscenes, I love dialogue, so all of this is awesome news for me. Salvaging. Salvaging was one of those things which was a complete waste of time. It took you so long to just list everything to salvage and break, and then by the time you went back to the salvaging option, you would have probably cleared it out long before if you deleted them one by one. Well, now the option to select stuff to salvage is instant, meaning you can mass mark everything and then break everything in one go to make it that bit better. Again, this cannot be done on the actual reward screen, it can only be done from the vault. It's still a nice option, it's still a nice improvement, and the fact that it's pretty much instant now to mark something to delete is pretty awesome. Strongholds. So on the topic of strongholds, people have been complaining and they have been seeing that spawning in on the monitor only is a waste of time, especially with the current loot system. Yes, it's annoying that people leave, but they also leave because, well, basically they're not going to get any legendaries from the final boss. This is changing as of next week with the new patch update, but what have they done, or what can they do, in order to prevent people from leaving? Because, you know, people might not be interested in that chance, people might not be interested in the Elysium caches, so what can they do to prevent me from getting into that instance and fighting the boss? Well, it's a double-edged sword, sadly. If the instance has been active for more than two minutes, it's locked. So if people leave, if anyone is queuing to join a stronghold, that instance is locked and you can't join it. This also has the double-edged sword where if you can't join that instance, it means that group will no longer refill. I think this is a much worse option than what they had previously. I understand why they did it, but at this point I think this is not the right option. Let's see how it plays out, let's see how it affects the community, how it affects the player base, how it affects matchmaking. This is going to be a much more bigger problem than they're setting it out to be, because honestly I think this is probably the worst way to go. I don't really know how else they would have done it. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you have any genuine ideas, because locking the instance after two minutes and not allowing me to actually go back in is a bit harsh. Maybe set a half an hour cooldown? Or a 15 minute cooldown for people that leave the stronghold before its completion as a punishment i think this would also work but hey i'll put that forward and see what they say but if you have any other ideas do let me know and i will be forwarding them fog walls the bane of my existence especially the temple of scar i would always get stuck with a fog wall well if you do the current workaround right now is to go into your map hold the square button if you're playing on the playstation to basically respawn this will place you on the other side so it's a temporary workaround, however as of next week when the patch launches, this should hopefully be fixed. If you do find a fog wall, please report it to them, because as far as they're concerned and aware, they've pretty much caught all of them. But if there is any still remaining, let them know and that will be fixed for patch 1.0.5. But they need to be aware in order to fix it, as far as they're concerned and as far as they're aware, they have caught all of them. So fingers crossed, this is the case. I'm not sure if many of you would have noticed, but there is a bug with the revive timer. So if you go down, your revive timer is safe for 45 seconds, I believe it is. Let's say it got down to 10 seconds and then someone starts raising you and then they go down. Your revive timer would go back up by 25 seconds and then you'd have to wait again for an extremely long time before you can get back up. This apparently has now been fixed in patch 1.0.4, which is arriving next week. So this is a really nice change and it was really, really frustrating if you actually were experiencing this. Especially if someone decided to raise you at one second, right? It will now take longer to overheat your javelin and recovery will be a lot faster. If you use the universal component that actually extends your flying time by another 50%, then you'll be flying for days. 
So expect a vast change in overheating temperatures for your Javelin from next week. They will be adding more universal components. These ones will now be orientated for weapons instead of armor stats. An example that was given was a shotgun. Applying 7 shotgun shells grants additional effect. Acid, much like the Sentinel's grenade launcher, Colossus. And they will be adding a universal component for each weapon type. So it will be nice to go through these once they're out or once they're data mined. So we can see exactly what they are and what they give. And what they'll actually give us in terms of armor and shields. But either way, we are getting more Masterwork Universal Components, so it's always a good thing. The health bug they believe is fixed. They're not 100% sure that the fix is perfect. However, based on their testing, which they've said they've done vigorously, nothing weird came up. It's a difficult bug for them to actually narrow down. However, they have said that they believe it's fixed, and the patch next week will have this resolved. If it doesn't, they are requesting that you report it with as much information as possible to help them narrow down the problem. Now, I know a lot of you are going to go back on the whole, why should we be reporting it? They have testers and all this and all that. The simple fact is, they may have 20 testers in the office. We as players are in the hundreds of thousands. So literally put, there's more of us playing the game on a daily basis than they are. So there's more of a chance that we're going to find stuff that they ain't. You know, this is just a thing. This is reality. This is the case. If it is still applying and it's still there and you experience this, report it. The more reports we get, the easier it is for them to narrow down the issue and fix the bug once and for all. So the Colossus component, Shock Treatment, where hitting enemies with a certain ability increases heat dissipation, has been changed. Now, hitting enemies with L1 or R1, depending on what skill is selected for that component, will increase your damage output for X and R seconds. I believe it's 5 seconds, but now it's just a straight up damage buff because they've realised that the heat dissipation is a complete and utter waste of time. There isn't enough aerial enemies for you to defeat while you're flying around, and simply put, while you're flying high up, if you stop to fight stuff, you're pretty much adding more heat. So, overall, I think this is a really cool change, the fact that it's a straight up damage buff now, and this is pretty much how I believe the game should be focusing on, giving us that power of fantasy. I think this is pretty awesome, and it will definitely factor into my next Colossus build once I get my hand on it, because this is a straight up damage buff. So, it's amazing. In the next patch, we won't be having any support masterworks, which is a shame. Additionally, luck is still being looked at and will not be in the next patch. However, Chris was pretty vocal in the fact that he doesn't like the luck stat, so we may actually see this stat removed going forward. But it won't be in this upcoming patch, but do expect some changes to luck or modifications to luck by patch 1.0.5. So at least we have that to look forward to because now we have some form of idea where the devs stand. It doesn't mean that it's going to completely change, but there is a really good chance that luck could be removed from the game and become an intrinsic stat, which I believe should be the case. Consumables can now be sorted by rarity and name, so you can have the epic ones all at the top or by name if you choose to have this. They'll be adding more filters in the next in patch 1.0.5, however as of patch 1.0.4 you'll only have two filters, rarity and name, and honestly the rarity alone is good enough for me right now because it's really annoying having to scroll all the way to the bottom just to get the sigils I want. So rarity is Drop rates are additive and not multiplicative for GM2 and 3. So GM2 will add more to your drop rate, GM3 will add even more. If you have any items that can increase your drop rate, which, which is pretty much your luck stat, the increases to drop rates is additive. They are still working on quick play and legendaries dropping from other classes is intended. But it should be rare and sadly though it does appear, they are looking into actually minimizing it but it is something that is working as intended and has a really low chance of getting it. So think of it this way. If you actually get a legendary, it's cool beans. If you manage to get a legendary for the wrong class, that's double RNG screwing you over for another class. But it's extremely rare, so hopefully none of you experience this too much. I've experienced this for a couple of masterworks, not a legendary yet, but I can only just imagine Getting a legendary for another class must be heartbreaking. Finally, wild events on maps are visible after discovery, so if you go down and you go back, 
you've got a marker on the map now in a big showable case in order for you to go from where you respawn back to the world map and get back into the action without having to search for it. Ideally you should spawn just outside the world event but this is an acceptable solution for now but I do hope they improve on this. Right that's pretty much what they discussed in the stream so we've got Elysium caches, instant forge access, legendary contracts being on your map, we've got a new stat screen showing components, We've got new missions for legendary contracts. We've got new legendary story missions. One that you're still watching being played in the background. There'll be four of these at launch. You've got legendary missions which you're watching on screen right now that you can do. There's a host of updates that are coming with patch 1.04. In fact, they went as far as saying that there is 13 Word doc pages of updates that they are going through and the patch notes will be available closer to the actual release of the patch. They will announce the date of the patch probably sometime this weekend. However, it is going to be next week. Right, let me know in the comment section below your thoughts, feelings and, and any other question you may have regarding this stream. Did you enjoy the stream? Did you watch it? If you didn't, what do you think of the updates that have been delivered? Did you find any of this useful? Does any of it interest you? The Elysium cash keys maybe? The legendary contracts being on your map instantly and repeatable consistently? Stronghold loot? stronghold bosses dropping loot that should be cool right so let me know in the comment section below what you think and your thoughts and let's have that discussion and see where it goes from there and then we can try and maybe formulate some stuff that we want to see added changed applied and we can and i can try and send it over to bioware and see if we can get that somewhere right thanks for watching thanks for being here i know it's been a longish video i do apologize for that but until the next video Remain legend.